discusses in one of the lectures that um, adjacency matrix requires n cubed space complexity. Yeah, it's simply just not true. Um, an adjacency matrix is a bit to localize just n squared, right? Yeah, it's in, so it must work. But you know, if you had different nodes that were living on different computers, then yeah, then you would have some sort of n cubed space complexity, but it wouldn't be on one machine. It would be spread out over multiple machines, but anyway. Um, so another thing, he calls branches, he, he calls things branches here, uh, he sort of uses branch and node. Uh, there sometimes he says branch and he means subtree and sometimes he says branch and he means a node. So in a branch, for instance, this is a node, but something like destroy branch, deletes this branch and all its children. Um, I guess this branch means this node. So branch means node. Um, what is that in class? Yeah, uh, so just go with that, I suppose. But yeah, branch is, um, I don't know, but yeah. All right, so AVL trees. Well, as you guys recall, when we talked about linked lists, right, uh, they became big old at any time you wanted to do some sort of operation such as search. And that's the whole purpose, right, that we're doing uh, an ABL tree. ABL tree is a self-balancing tree, right? Okay, so I watched the lecture on ABL trees, drawing these balancing trees. And uh, there's one extremely core component of ABL trees that was not discussed at all in that lecture, and that's ABL trees require something called a balancing factor for every single node. A balancing factor, I'm just gonna write as BF, but balancing factor, okay. every single node has this, okay? Balancing factor is equal to the height of your right subtree, And I didn't give myself enough space, but minus the height of your left subtree. Okay? That's the balancing factor. So, um, so for instance, what is the balancing factor for this guy right here? this is one, and then the how, height of your left subtree is one, and minus one is zero, right? And then the same for all these numbers right here. Zero, zero, okay. Any questions about balancing factor? So positive is in favor of the right side. Uh, right side over balance, negative is uh, left side over balance. Yes, um, positive, your right side, yeah, your right side is heavy, Say either heavy or imbalanced, uh, and then negative your left side is heavy. Okay, so what does an EVL tree do? Well, the first thing you have to know about an EVL tree is there's something called an invariant for EVL trees. What does EVL stand for? I think it's the name of the uh, creators or something like that, or the people that wrote the code, created the algorithm. Uh, so Andy uh, Vargas and Larry or something, I don't know, some, some dudes in EVL, or girls, I don't know, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, all right, so what does an EVL tree have? It has something called an invariant, okay? So you'll learn about this more when you get to algorithms, you don't really have to uh, understand exactly what invariants are, but they're used in proofs and stuff like that. But uh, for an ABL tree, all this means is uh, I'm going to assume that I have a valid ABL tree. And uh, when I do an insert, this helps me in my algorithm to ensure that all the other properties are maintained after an insertion. Okay. And so what is the invariant? It's essentially every um, balance 
factor is between negative one and positive one. Okay. So, in other words, if I say I'm going to insert into an ABL tree every single balancing factor in that node, you can assume is either negative one, zero, or positive one. So what does this imply in terms of, of uh, how imbalanced any subtree could possibly be? You're saying the balancing factor has to be between negative one and positive? Yeah, uh, yeah. So it all, yeah, an ADL tree, the balancing factor for every node is either negative one, zero, or positive one. Okay. And that's what's called the invariant. Going to, we're going to assume that that's true, okay? and anytime it becomes not true, we'll instantly correct it to make it true. Yeah, because like if it is also equal to the height of the right subtree minus the height of the left subtree, I can immediately imagine circumstances where it's not, it's outside of those bounds. Like the, the yeah, correct. So uh, it can become, it can, uh, it can get outside of the bounds. True after an insertion. Uh, but the invariant is not, uh, it, it, invariant is more of an assumption before you do any sort of operation. So I assume that I have a valid ABL tree. Now I'm gonna do an insertion. And now the worst case scenario is something is either minus two or plus two. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, there. So, so let's do an insertion that BB is done. So let's say that this is what it looks like right now. Okay. We have a, a zero here, and then we have a negative one here, and then this is nothing. So let's say, I don't know, this is 12, 8, and then we say, hey, we're gonna insert five into this ABL tree. Okay. So it's exactly like a binary search tree in the first step of an insertion, right? Where we're gonna find the location it's supposed to go according to the rules of the binary search tree, where is five less than 12? It is. Is five less than eight? It is. So it's gonna go right here. As the left child of eight, right? Okay. So what is the balancing factor after this insertion? Negative two. For, yes, for the root node is negative two. For root eight, or excuse me, node eight. Negative one. <laughs> negative one. Okay. And then for the root negative two. Okay. So now the balancing factor is incorrect for one of these nodes, and we have to do a one, uh, rotation to correct it. So if we were to create a struct for this, this tree, mm -hmm. okay, we would have to give it the property of, um, like you know, of, of the struct would have its value, left pointer, right pointer, um, I guess upper pointer, go up to a root, mm -hmm. um, and then the balancing factor as well? Exactly. Okay, so five, five things in one truck to make a tree like this. Exactly, so here's the, um, here's the blueprint of the struct right here, I just brought it up. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have a parent pointer, left pointer, right pointer, your balance factor, and then your data. Okay, was this up there before I said that? No, I just okay. brought it up there. I would say if it was up there, I probably would. Just to be clear, just so everybody can be clear on what's okay. going on. Okay, so with an imbalance like this, we have to determine where the imbalance is coming from. And in this case, we just inserted a five, right? It looks like an S, but it's supposed to be a five. My fives are terrible. Still looks like an S. Whatever. Okay, so we know we just inserted the five, right? So how can I determine where the imbalance is? And, and by where, 
I mean there's uh, four scenarios. There's a left left, there's a left right, there's a right right, and there's a right left. And by left left, I mean this guy's in balance, but the node that's responsible for the imbalance is left left. Okay. If it, for instance, we had inserted a, a nine or something, okay, this would be a left right, because the node that just got inserted that's responsible for this imbalance is left and then right from the node that's imbalanced. Sorry, he just got that completely wrong. So I'm just trying to rewire my mind for a second. Oh, okay. We know he did before, right? No, he called that. He called this a fucking left, left, right. No, no, he didn't. He called this a left, right. He actually. Yeah. He didn't have any of these different. He didn't have left, right, or right, left. Right. Yeah, he only totally had left, left, or right, right. And then you might know that that note was showed. He showed this part. He did show left, right, right. Well, yeah. Anyway. Either way. Let's go back to this one. This is a left left. Okay, so how do we correct the left left? Well, it's pretty easy. All we do is we rotate in this direction. Okay, and so what I mean by that is that 12 is going to become the right child of 8, and then 8 is going to still have the left child of 5 here. So the tree look something like this. Okay. And notice that the balancing factor of a will become zero. And why is that? Because, because no, you, yeah, it's obvious. Yeah. It's because the uh, we're subtracting, or excuse me, we're subtracting the height of this left subtree by one, and we're adding one to the height of the right subtree. So it must be balanced after a rotation. Yep. Okay. Any questions? So I guess what is an invariant again? Invariant is something that you assume is true before um, you do any sort of operation on it. So I assume that this is a valid ABL tree. That before I did the insert, that every balancing factor was between negative one and plus one. Okay. okay. And so that is wrong. Not like a thing. Right. Yeah. What is Google saying here? I'm sure Google's got it. Would it would it be something that we have manually said? Like we we want to keep a certain level of balance to our tree, so we say that the balancing factor should not exceed like in, in maybe in some cases negative two and positive two, and that be like. So the problem if you um, if you do something like that is that when I do the rotation, because I know how to reverse something from negative to a positive, then I know after one single rotation, wherever that rotation is, the rest of the tree is going to be balanced. Versus if I start allowing other values such as negative two or positive two, one rotation might not cut it. What if this is like negative three, negative four? How many rotations is it going to take to balance it? I don't know. But this way, the algorithm is very clean. Okay. It's negative two or positive two. One rotation, you're done. Okay. So in math, the, math, the mathematics definition. Is uh, something that remains unchanged after unchanged after operation or transformation. Okay, so basically, it's something that's true before we put the insertion, and it's something we have to maintain the truth of after the insertion. <coughs> that's all the invariants. Okay. okay, so an invariant it basically means that when we do an insertion, it's the, the balancing factor properties are always the same. Uh, the balancing factors are always between negative one. And then after the insertion, you have to make sure that they're also between negative one possible. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so now let's talk about what's happening to the subtrees here. Okay. So 
Um, it's possible that there's an entire subtree right here. I'm going to rename these make it a little easier for us to visualize what's going on. Let's say A, B, C. So this triangle here represents the right subtree of A. So I'm just going to do A, R. I'm going to do both of so. A, R. Okay. Right subtree of B here, E, R. C, L. And CR. So what happens to these during a rotation? Well, uh, the only thing that really is a, a let me choose, match their rotation A, B, C. Okay. The only uh, child here that's uh, a little tricky is going to be for a left-left rotation. <coughs> it's going to be this right subchild of B. Okay, the right subtree of B. Uh, because A here, since we're just doing a right rotation, it can go ahead and keep its same child, right? which is the same thing as say, its entire right subject. Right? Uh, C can also keep both of its children. C left, C right. Okay. The only thing that is a little tricky is this right subject of B. Well, the right subtree of B must be greater than B. So clearly, after the rotation, the right subtree of B must be on this side. B already has a child, though. Right? So it obviously can't go there. But notice that B right subtree is also less than A. And look, we have a nice little open spot after this rotation because the left child of A was B. But that's no longer the case. So left subtree of A will become the B right subtree previous. Right? So this guy is right here. So it was previously B's right subtree becomes A's left subtree. Any questions about this? I feel like you guys a little bit, but. So we, we did a, a right rotation, B is now the. This uh, is a left-left rotation, so. I guess it depends on what you want to call it, but. For me, the imbalance is coming from left-left. So it's a left-left imbalance and a left-left rotation. Well, just to keep it clear. Gotcha. Okay, so we're, I'm sorry, we're doing a left left rotation here. We're, we're taking B, B becomes the root node. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so imagine if I just had like a string here. This is how I've heard it been described as well. So if I had a string, I could just pull everything down. And the string looks something like this. Um, and I have some sort of nail here. Right? This little second string right here that's sticking out is the right subtree of B. After I just pull this down a little bit, right? What's the string gonna look like? Something like this. String. Okay. Um, so that's okay. one way to visualize it. It's not simply Taking these nodes and I'm pulling them down so that A is now here, B is root, C is still in the same location. The only thing that changes is the right subtree of B becomes the left subtree of A. Same thing, but just a 